This is the remarkable tale of Sultan Mohammed V of Morocco, a young ruler who stood firm against the rising tide of anti-Semitism that threatened to engulf Europe and North Africa. In an era when Jewish communities across the continent faced unimaginable horrors, Morocco became an unlikely haven, thanks to the brave and principled actions of its Muslim leader. To fully appreciate the magnitude of Mohammed V's actions, we must first set the stage. Morocco in the 1940s was a land of contrasts, where ancient traditions collided with the modern world. The country had been under French protectorate since 1912, its destiny seemingly controlled by colonial powers an ocean away. Yet within this complex political landscape, a vibrant and deeply rooted Jewish community had flourished for centuries. The history of Jews in Morocco stretches back over two millennia, predating even the fall of ancient Carthage. By 1940, their numbers had swelled to over a quarter of a million, making it one of the largest Jewish populations in the Muslim world. These were not mere residents, but integral members of Moroccan society, their story deeply interwoven with the fabric of the nation's culture and history. Jewish communities in Morocco had experienced periods of both prosperity and hardship over the centuries. Under Islamic rule, they generally enjoyed the protected status of dhimmi, allowing them to practice their religion freely in exchange for paying a special tax. Many rose to prominent positions in trade, diplomacy, and even in the royal the court arrival itself, of European colonialism in the 19th and early 20th and centuries brought to new challenges lands. and opportunities. While it opened doors to Western education and commerce, it also introduced strains of European anti-Semitism previously unknown in Morocco. It was into this complex tapestry of history and culture that our unlikely hero would emerge. Mohammed V was born in 1909, the third son of the reigning sultan's younger brother. As a prince far down the line of succession, no one could have predicted the pivotal role he would play in history. His path to the throne was as unexpected as it was fateful. In 1912, Morocco became a French protectorate under the Treaty of Fez. This agreement came after years of diplomatic maneuvering between European powers, particularly France and Germany, who sought to expand their influence in North Africa. The treaty led to the abdication of Sultan Abdelhafid, who was replaced by Mohammed V's father, Moulay Yousef. Fifteen years later, in 1927, Moulay Yousef passed away, leaving a succession crisis. The French authorities, who held true power in Morocco, saw an opportunity. Instead of choosing one of the older, more experienced princes, they selected the 16-year-old Mohammed to ascend to the throne. Their calculation was simple, a young, inexperienced sultan would be easier to control and manipulate. This decision would prove to be one of the great misjudgments in French colonial history. For beneath the young sultan's quiet demeanor lay a steel resolve, a keen intelligence, and a profound sense of moral responsibility that would soon be put to the test in ways no one could have foreseen. The early years of Mohammed V's reign were marked by a delicate balance between cooperation with the French authorities and subtle attempts to assert Moroccan autonomy. He used this time to learn, observe, and build relationships with various factions within Moroccan society, including the Jewish community. Little did anyone know that these formative years were preparing him for the monumental challenges that lay ahead. As the 1930s drew to a close, the world watched in horror as Nazi Germany's power grew. The rise of fascism in Europe cast a long shadow, even reaching the shores of North Africa. In June 1940, France fell to the German invasion, and the collaborationist Vichy regime took control not only of metropolitan France but also of its colonies and protectorates, including Morocco. The implications of this shift were immediately felt in Morocco. The Vichy regime, eager to prove its loyalty to Nazi Germany, wasted no time in seeking to impose anti-Semitic laws across its territories. These laws, modeled on the infamous Nuremberg Laws, threatened to strip Jews of their citizenship, exclude them from public life, and pave the way for more severe persecutions. It was in this dark hour that Sultan Mohammed V, now 30 years old, faced the most critical decision of his reign. The young Sultan, who had spent years carefully navigating the complex political landscape of colonial Morocco, now stood at a crossroads. Would he acquiesce to the demands of the Vichy government, turning his back on centuries of Jewish-Muslim coexistence in Morocco? 
or would he stand by the Jewish subjects who had been an integral part of his kingdom for generations, potentially risking his throne and even his life? Muhammad V's response was as swift as it was courageous. When Vichy officials presented him with lists of discriminatory measures against Jews, the Sultan is said to have declared, there are no Jews in Morocco. There are only Moroccan subjects. With these words, he drew a line in the sand, refusing to distinguish between his citizens based on their faith. This was not mere rhetoric but a deeply held conviction rooted in Mohammed V's understanding of his role as both a political leader and a spiritual guide. As commander of the faithful, a title held by Moroccan sultans, he interpreted his responsibilities to encompass all people of the book, Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. In his view, the protection of all his subjects was not just a duty but a sacred trust. The Sultan's stance was remarkable not only for its moral clarity but also for its political courage. At a time when much of Europe and North Africa was succumbing to the tide of anti-Semitism, when leaders across the region were either actively persecuting their Jewish populations or standing idly by as others did so, Mohammed V chose a different path. He understood that the fate of Morocco's Jews was inextricably linked to the fate of Morocco itself, and that to abandon one group of his subjects would be to betray the very essence of his role as sultan. Despite his bold stance, the reality of Morocco's situation as a French protectorate meant that Mohammed V's power was not absolute. The Vichy authorities forced him to promulgate two laws restricting certain professions and schools to Jews and requiring them to live in ghettos. However, even in apparent compliance, the Sultan found ways to resist. He declined to fully enforce these laws, turning what could have been a death sentence for many into a largely symbolic gesture. The Sultan used his influence behind the scenes to ensure that local officials implemented these laws with as much leniency as possible. Many Moroccans, taking their cue from their leader, found ways to help their Jewish neighbors circumvent the restrictions, but Mohammed V resistance didn't stop at passive non-compliance. He took active steps to demonstrate his continued support for the Jewish community. In a move laden with symbolism, he made a point of inviting senior representatives of the Jewish community to the annual banquet celebrating the anniversary of his accession to the throne. Not only were they invited, but they were given seats of honor next to the French officials a clear message that in Mohammed V Morocco, Jews were not to be marginalized or persecuted. At this gathering, Mohammed V delivered words that would echo through history. Addressing the French officials directly, he stated, I absolutely do not approve of the new anti-Semitic laws and I refuse to associate myself with a measure I disagree with. I reiterate as I did in the past that the Jews are under my protection and I reject any distinction that should be made amongst my people. These were not empty words but a promise one that Mohammed V would keep throughout the war and beyond. His stance made relations between France and Morocco tense, as revealed by a French government telegram discovered decades later in Paris archives. The telegram reported that relations had become much more tense since the day the anti-Semitic laws went into effect, a clear indication of the Sultan's continued resistance. The impact of Mohammed V's protective stance rippled through Moroccan society. His example emboldened many Moroccans to reject anti-Semitism and to continue treating their Jewish neighbors with respect and kindness. There are numerous stories of Muslims hiding Jews in their homes, helping them conduct business under Muslim names, and otherwise defying the discriminatory laws. The impact of Mohammed V protective stance cannot be overstated. While Jewish communities across Europe and North Africa faced deportation, forced labor, and extermination, Morocco became a relative haven. During the two years of Vichy rule, not a single Moroccan Jew was deported or killed. Unlike in other occupied territories, the Jews of Morocco were never forced to wear the yellow star that marked them for persecution elsewhere. This is not to say that life for Moroccan Jews during this period was without hardship. The discriminatory laws, even if not fully enforced, still caused significant disruption and fear. Many lost their jobs or were forced to relocate to overcrowded Jewish quarters. Yet compared to the fate of Jewish communities elsewhere under Nazi influence, the situation in Morocco was remarkably stable. 
when Allied troops liberated North Africa in November 1942 as part of Operation Torch, they found something remarkable the Moroccan Jewish community was essentially intact. In a time when millions of Jews were being systematically murdered across Europe, this was nothing short of miraculous. The survival of Morocco's Jews stands as a testament to the power of leadership and the importance of intercommunal solidarity in the face of oppression. The actions of Sultan Mohammed V stand in stark contrast to other leaders in the region during this tumultuous time. While some, like the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin Hussaini, allied themselves with the Axis powers and actively supported the Nazi cause, Mohammed V chose a different path. Hussaini spent the war years in Berlin, meeting with Hitler and Himmler, broadcasting pro-Nazi propaganda to the Arab world, and even helping to recruit Muslim volunteers for the SS. His actions not only contributed to the suffering of Jews but also tarnished the reputation of Muslim leaders in the eyes of many around the world. In contrast, Mohammed V's stance demonstrated that Muslim leadership could be a force for protection and coexistence rather than persecution. His actions served as a powerful counterpoint to the narrative of inevitable conflict between Muslims and Jews that was gaining traction in some quarters. Not only did Mohammed V protect his Jewish subjects, but he also became a strong supporter of the Allied cause. In January 1943, he welcomed President Franklin D. Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and French President Charles de Gaulle to Casablanca for a historic conference. This meeting, which helped shape the course of the war and solidified Morocco's position on the side of the Allies, took place in a city where Jews continued to live and work freely, a fact not lost on the Allied leaders. Mohammed V's commitment to protecting his Jewish subjects didn't end with the war. In 1948, when the declaration of the State of Israel sparked violent reactions across much of the Arab world, the Sultan stood firm. He reminded his people that Jews had always been protected in Morocco and should not be harmed, maintaining the peaceful coexistence that had characterized the country for centuries. This principled stance continued through the 1950s, a turbulent period that saw Morocco struggle for independence from France. Throughout this time, Mohammed V worked to ensure that Morocco's Jews were seen as an integral part of the national fabric, not as a foreign element or a fifth column. When Morocco gained independence in 1956, and Mohammed V transitioned from sultan to king, he continued to emphasize the multi-religious nature of the Moroccan state. Jews were appointed to high government positions, and the king made it clear that emigration was a choice, not a necessity, for Morocco's Jews. Tragically, Mohammed V's reign as king of an independent Morocco was cut short by his sudden death in 1961, just five years after independence. The outpouring of grief at his passing was immense and crossed all religious boundaries. Some 75,000 Jews publicly mourned, joining hundreds of thousands of their Muslim compatriots in marking the passing of a beloved leader. The chief rabbi of Morocco delivered a moving eulogy by radio, praising the late king's wisdom and compassion. Jewish community leaders were prominent participants in the coronation of his son, Hassan II, symbolizing the continued place of Jews in Moroccan society. Today, while the Moroccan Jewish community has dwindled in numbers, largely due to emigration to Israel, France, and North America, those who remain, and those who have emigrated, continue to express their eternal gratitude to Mohammed V. His heroism is commemorated and celebrated not only in Morocco but in Jewish communities around the world, a shining example of leadership in dark times. The story of Sultan Mohammed V and his protection of Morocco's Jews is more than just a historical footnote. It's a powerful reminder of the impact that moral leadership can have in the face of great evil. At a time when religious intolerance and extremism are on the rise globally, this tale of Muslim-Jewish cooperation and human decency shines as a beacon of hope. Mohammed V's legacy continues to influence Moroccan policy and society today. His successors, Hassan II and Mohammed VI, have maintained his policy of protecting Jewish heritage in Morocco and fostering good relations with Jewish communities worldwide. Morocco has become a leader in the Arab world in promoting interfaith dialogue and preserving Jewish historical sites. As we mark the 75th anniversary of Casablanca, 
and reflect on its themes of resistance and moral courage, let us also remember the real-life hero who walked the streets of that fabled city. Sultan Mohammed V's legacy teaches us that true heroism often lies not in grand gestures, but in the quiet, steadfast defense of human dignity and equality. In a world that sometimes seems darkened by division and hate, the example of Mohammed V reminds us of our shared humanity. It shows us that even in the darkest of times, there are those who will stand up for what is right, who will protect the vulnerable, and who will choose unity over division. As we face the challenges of our own time, let us draw inspiration from this unsung hero of Casablanca. Let us remember that one person, standing firm in their convictions, can indeed make a difference. And let us strive, in our own lives and communities, to embody the principles of tolerance, protection, and human dignity that Sultan Mohammed V so bravely defended. In doing so, we honor not just his memory, but the memory of all those who have stood against tyranny and oppression throughout history. We affirm that the spirit of Casablanca, both the real city and its celluloid counterpart lives on in all who choose compassion over cruelty and courage over complacency. As the final notes of As Time Goes By fade away, let us carry forward the lesson of Sultan Mohammed V, that in the face of hatred, love can prevail, in the shadow of fear, courage can flourish, and in a world of division, unity is always possible. This, perhaps, is the greatest legacy of the unsung hero of Casablanca a legacy that, like the film that bears the city's name, will remain timeless. In a world still grappling with prejudice and persecution, the story of Mohammed V stands as a testament to the power of moral leadership and interfaith solidarity. It reminds us that the choice between right and wrong, between humanity and cruelty, is one that each of us faces every day. And it challenges us to ask ourselves, when our moment comes, will we have the courage to stand up for what is right, regardless of the cost? As we leave Rick's Cafe and step out into the real world, let us carry with us the spirit of Mohammed V, a spirit of courage, compassion, and unwavering commitment to human dignity. For in the end, it is not the battles we fight, but the stands we take that define us. And in taking a stand for justice and humanity, we keep alive the flame of hope that burned so brightly in the heart of Casablanca's unsung hero. As we conclude this episode of Abundant Fire Wisdom, let's take a moment to reflect on the profound lessons we've gleaned from Sultan Mohammed V's story. His actions remind us that true wisdom often manifests in the choices we make when faced with moral challenges. In standing up for his Jewish subjects, Mohammed V demonstrated that abundance isn't just about material wealth it's about the richness of spirit that comes from embracing our common humanity. This story aligns perfectly with our channel's mission to provide you with insights that can transform your perspective and enrich your life. It shows us that wisdom can be found in unexpected places and that history has much to teach us about navigating the complexities of our modern world. As you go about your week, I encourage you to carry this story with you. Ask yourself, how can I embody the principles of courage, compassion, and moral leadership in my own life? How can I create abundance not just for myself, but for those around me? Remember, true wisdom isn't just about knowing, it's about doing. It's about making choices that uplift not just ourselves, but our entire community. Sultan Mohammed V's legacy challenges us to be beacons of hope and catalysts for positive change in our own spheres of influence. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Abundant Fi Wisdom. If you found value in today's story, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us continue to bring these important narratives to light. Until next time, keep seeking wisdom, keep growing, and keep spreading abundance in all its forms. This is Abundant Fi Wisdom, signing off.